This is the Russian Invasion of Ukraine Regional Survey Report produced by the Near East South Asia Center for Strategic Studies. In April 2022, the NISA Center reached out to its global alumni network with a series of 20 questions regarding the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Nearly 450 responses were received from across the NISA area of responsibility, as well as Europe, the United States, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Southeast Asia. The feedback received from NISA Center alumni in this survey will help to shape and fine-tune NISA program curricula in the years to come and has been shared with policymakers with the U.S. government. As we move through each survey question in greater detail, please feel free to pause the video at any point to view the data at your leisure. Question 1. What are your thoughts on the longevity of the Russia-Ukraine war? More than half of overall respondents view the Russia-Ukraine war as a medium-term crisis. 36% answered that it is a long-term crisis, while only 9% view the war as a short-term crisis. Similar results were reflected sub-regionally. 60% of U.S. respondents answered that it is a long-term crisis. Question 2. What do you think is the best characterization of the Russia-Ukraine war? A clear majority of overall respondents argue that the Russian invasion of Ukraine is a crisis of global proportions. Many respondents answered this way due to the crisis's effect on food and energy prices, which some argued may have second-tier reverberations in the form of social unrest in their respective countries and regions. Question 3. How do you view Russia in relation to your country? A plurality of overall respondents answered that they view Russia as a partner, followed by those who answered as an enemy. 20.5% answered that they view Russia as a competitor and 11% as an ally. There were some nuances within South Asia where not all respondents were comfortable with their government's positions towards Russia or the invasion. Respondents from the Levant mostly viewed Russia as a partner or competitor. Respondents from Central Asia and the Caucasus viewed Russia as an enemy or partner. A slight majority of respondents from North Africa and the Sahel and the Gulf subregions viewed Russia as a partner. U.S. and European respondents mostly viewed Russia as an enemy. Question 4. Was Russia justified in invading Ukraine? 71.5% of overall respondents believed that Russia was not justified in invading Ukraine, but there were significant differences in responses among the subregions. 62.5% of respondents from the Gulf believed Russia was justified in the invasion. All U.S. respondents and most European respondents answered that Russia was not justified in the invasion. Question 5. What is your view of NATO? Overall respondents were almost evenly split in their views of NATO. The most favorable attitudes were seen among Europeans, Americans, and Levantines. Other subregions generally had a neutral view, with some unfavorable respondents citing NATO's inaction or impotence towards the conflict. Question 6. Which of the following actions do you think will most help to end the Russia-Ukraine war? Overall responses were split, with 23% answering that Russia agrees to end the conflict but maintains pro-Russian areas. 32% of South Asian respondents answered that the most likely action to end the war would be that the EU and others agree to accept key Russian trade and security concerns, while 21% from Central Asia and the Caucasus, as well as 40% from the U.S., answered that the defeat of Russian forces in Ukraine would most likely end the conflict. Question 7. What was your country's or government's response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine? 53% of overall respondents answered that their governments opposed the invasion, while 45% answered that their governments were neutral. Only 2% of respondents answered that their governments supported the invasion. Neutrality was most pronounced in South Asia and Central Asia and the Caucasus. Question 8. What do you think of your country's or government's response to the Russia-Ukraine war? 32.6% of overall respondents strongly approved of their government's response, while 21.8% were neutral. South Asia and the Levant slightly leaned towards neutral, while those from Central Asia and the Caucasus, North Africa and the Sahel, the Gulf, and Europe leaned towards strongly approve. U.S. respondents were more extremely split in their answers with zero neutral responses, which may be indicative of partisan lines. Question 9. What do you think of the Biden administration's response to the Russia-Ukraine war? Overall respondents lean towards somewhat approve or neutral. Disapproval was strongest amongst South Asians and Levantines. Approval was highest amongst those from Europe. Question 10. What do you think of the EU response to the Russia-Ukraine war? 
Overall answers to this question lean towards the middle of the spectrum as opposed to strong approval or disapproval, although 31% of European respondents strongly approved. Question 11. Is the United States providing enough support to Ukraine? 55% of overall respondents answered that the U.S. is providing enough support to Ukraine. However, over half of respondents from South Asia and the Gulf answered no, while American respondents were evenly split. Question 12. Should your country provide more support to Ukraine? A little over half of overall respondents answered no. Some answered that the U.S. and Europe were more than capable of handling the crisis on their own. Many respondents from the MENA region answered that their countries were already in a conflict-prone region and thus could not afford to get involved on either side. Respondents from Central Asia and the Caucasus were generally keen to see their countries offer more support, whether humanitarian or moral. Question 13. Do you agree that your country should work closely with the U.S. and its allies in responding to Russia's invasion of Ukraine? 63% of overall respondents answered yes. Respondents were more agreeable to their country's involvement when phrased as working with the U.S. and its allies, and some stated that their countries could not act openly. Only those from Central Asia and the Caucasus answered no in the majority. Question 14. Do you favor maintaining strict economic sanctions on Russia? A majority of overall respondents answered yes. Only a majority of those from South Asia and the Gulf answered no. The concern over the effectiveness of sanctions or the harm it would do to the Russian people was voiced across all subregions, and a more targeted approach to sanctions was generally favored. Question 15. Do you support taking military action against Russia? There was very low support for military action against Russia in any form. 85.3% of overall respondents answered no. Only respondents from the U.S., Central Asia and the Caucasus, and to a lesser extent, Europe, voiced any significant support for military action. Most respondents explained that they feared sparking a nuclear war or World War III. Question 16. Do you support your country joining a military coalition for military action against Russia? The overall responses to this question were almost the same as the previous question, with 85.2% answering no. Question 17. Is the Russian invasion of Ukraine a major threat to your country's interests? Most respondents answered yes across all subregions, but this was less pronounced in South Asia and North Africa and the Sahel. Those who answered yes tended to cite economic effects of the war. Those who answered no generally answered that this was a faraway European crisis that did not affect their countries. There was concern from some MENA respondents over potential social unrest and revolution stemming from the price increases in commodities in the region. Question 18. Are you supportive of admitting Ukrainian refugees into your country? 69% of respondents answered that they were supportive of admitting Ukrainian refugees into their countries. Support was most pronounced in Europe, Central Asia and the Caucasus, and the U.S. Slight majorities in the Gulf and South Asia were not supportive of admitting refugees, with some arguing that the refugee burden should be taken on by the U.S. and Europe. Question 19. Do you believe that Russia's invasion of Ukraine is rewriting the international and global order? A solid majority of respondents answered yes. Respondents who answered no generally answered that this was either an exaggeration or that the global order had already been rewritten with previous Western interventions in Iraq and Afghanistan. Some respondents also argued that the global order should be rewritten and that the old order was outdated to meet current global challenges. Question 20. Do you believe that Russia's invasion of Ukraine is undermining international law and the idea of sovereignty of the state? A clear majority of 87.5% of overall respondents answered this question in the affirmative. Regardless of the answer, many respondents believed that international law had already been broken many times by the U.S. and Western powers and that Russia's actions were nothing new or exceptional. This concludes the audio briefing of the Russian Invasion of Ukraine Regional Survey Report. The full report is available on the NISA Center website.